So let's get into a lecture section now. Let's talk about the basics of the distributed core fabric, the fundamental concepts. Leaf spine is the architectural underpinning of the distributed core. It's a leaf spine architecture. What does that mean? I have leaf switches and I have spine switches. What's the difference between a leaf switch and a spine switch? A leaf switch is what provides access to the fabric. This is where I'm going to connect my servers or anything that needs to use the fabric. Firewall, load balancer, uh, a link to uh, a router to get me to the outside world. So on a leaf switch, there's a certain number of ports that are dedicated to access for the fabric, and there's a certain number of ports that are dedicated to uh, building the fabric, uplinking to a layer above, an interconnect. That interconnect is going to be the spine. So I have spine switches above the leaves that are providing that in interconnect right here. All of the ports, on, unlike a leaf switch, all of the ports on a spine switch are dedicated just to connecting to other leaf switches. There is no access ports. I'm not going to connect my servers to the spine switch. I'm not going to connect load balancers and firewalls to the spine switch. It's just a backbone interconnect for the leaf switches, which have the access ports to the fabric. Okay. Another fundamental design concept is that every leaf switch is connected to every spine switch. Not half, not three-fourths of them, every spine switch. That builds a ubiquitous, all points equidistance fabric, which is what we want. So I have my leaf switch here, which happens to be S4810s with a, as a topper rack switch. And it has uplinks that go to the spine layer. Now, let's talk about those uplinks. It's a 4810, right? I've got those QSFP ports on the 4810, four of them. So, how many uplinks can I have out of a 4810 as a leaf switch? I can have four, right? Four 40 gig ports. Okay, that's one possible scenario. I could also have 16 uplinks. I could have 16 10 gigs. I could take those four 40 gig QSFP ports and just convert them into 10 gig mode and make it 16 10 gigs. Either way, whether it's four 40 gigs or 16 10 gigs, I have 160 gig of uplink bandwidth out of that leaf. So with 48 ports going down into the server cabinet for the servers and 160 gig as my uplink to the spine, that's how I get to a 3 to 1 oversubscribed fabric. Now, what, why did I mention all this? It's because I mentioned every leaf switch needs to connect to every spine switch. So, how large can we build these fabrics? That depends on how many uplinks you have out of your leaf switch, because the number of uplinks determines the maximum number of spine switches. So here I've got two spine switches and I've got 16 top of racks. That equates to 768 server port fabric at 3 to 1 over subscription. That's good. Remember I can have either 4 or 16 uplinks out of my top of rack. In this case, um, I can grow this fabric even larger, scale it out the spine layer, and as I add more spine switches into the fabric, I have the capability now to add more leaf switches. So I've got eight spine switches now. I've got 64 top of rack leaf switches, S4810s. That equates to 3,072 3, server ports at three to one over subscription. I can have 16 possible uplinks out of an S4810. So I could even grow this larger and wider to 16 spine switches. Now I have 16. This is where I stop at least in this two-tier architecture of leaf and spine. Now each S4810 with its 16 10 gig uplinks is connected one time to each spine switch. There's my rule, each leaf connected to every <coughs> spine. And then the port count of my spine switch determines how many leaf switches I can have. So if my port count at 10 gig on the Z9000 is 128, right? And with each leaf switch connected one time to each spine switch, how many leaves can I have now? 128. 
That's how that happens. With 128 leaf switches now, each with 48 ports going into the server cabinet, 48 times 128 equals 6,144 server ports at 3 to 1 oversubscription in a 10 gig fabric. Not bad at all. Yes, this is a layer 3 fabric. There's my layer 2 to layer 3 gateway. So yes, we want to be aware of that. This is running a routing protocol from the leaf to the spine. OSPF, IS to IS, BGP, what have you. Okay, so we want to be aware of that. Now, most importantly, is that it doesn't matter if they buy a fabric from Dell, from Cisco, from Arista, from Juniper, from Bocade, from whoever, I don't care, in terms of challenges in deploying any kind of data center fabric. I don't care if it's a chassis with some top of rack switches or it's the distributed core. Number one, how are you going to design this fabric? What does the interconnect look like? What's the top of rack? How are they connected? How are the, how's the switch going to be configured? All of that. Somebody has to figure that out. Who's going to document that fabric once the design is done? Who's the lucky soul who gets to spend two weeks in front of Vizio drawing it out? Who's the other guy who has to spend another two weeks in front of Microsoft Excel drawing out a matrix of which switch ports connect to which other switch ports? And hopefully they didn't do it at 3 o'clock in the morning and made a bunch of errors. And even if they did, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't figure that out until the thing didn't work, right? Then you'd have to figure out what was broken and go fix it. So once the uh, fabric has been uh, deployed, or the switch has been powered on, who's going to go out and pound out a CLI configuration on all these switches? You're going to have to get a rowdy jockey to go in there, get on the CLI, and pound out an OSPF config. And how long is that going to take with 120 at least switches and 16 spine switches? And is he doing that at 3 o'clock in the morning in that change window? With it, you know, under caffeinated? And was there any mistakes there? Don't know. We won't know until the thing doesn't work, but we figure out that it doesn't work. Deployment. We have to make sure that all of the switches are running the right software. And most importantly, validation. We have to check that this thing actually works, that the right configuration was put on every switch, that the documentation is correct, that the cabling is correct. What if one of the cables from one leaf to one spine was miscabled? There's a good chance that might happen if you have all these cables here. How long is it going to take to figure out that something was broken? How long is it going to take out to, to take to figure out that one of the configurations was, was fat fingered on one of the leaf switches because the guy was doing that at 3 o'clock in the morning and was super tired? And then when you go to expand the fabric and make changes, expand new switches, let's say you add two more leaf switches or four more leaf switches, do you think that you can just configure those and just validate those leaf switches? No, you've made a change to the fabric, so you better go back and revalidate that entire fabric again. And who's going to go to Visio and update the drawing? Who's going to go to Microsoft Excel and update the wiring matrix? And who's going to go and check every single configuration and make sure everything looks good? These are the, you know, the common challenges that customers face deploying any kind of fabric. So this is really the sweet spot and what Dell Fabric Manager was intended to address. Design. You've got design templates. You pick from a drop-down box a series of templates of design. The design is done for you. Auto-documentation. Once that design is done, it pops out a PDF file right then and there. The drawing of the fabric and a table a matrix of which switch ports are connected to which other switch ports. Automated configuration. Nobody's logging into switches and pounding out a CLI, a human on a keyboard pounding out OSPF. This is done automatically by Dell Fabric Manager based on the design. And then once that configuration is done and that deployment is done, it doesn't stop there. It goes back to each switch and validates that the configuration is correct on each switch and that the cabling is correct. Checks the neighbor statements, the LLDP neighbor statements, and makes sure that, yep, port number one has the right neighbor on it, port number two has the right neighbor on it. All of that is done right away. So I don't have to spend days, weeks, running around checking each switch configuration, tracing out cables, trying to reverse engineer this thing because something doesn't seem to be working right. 
auto-validation. 